Welcome to the warm-up presented by Community Sports and Therapy. I'm Mark Kuntz. Matt Fink will join us momentarily as we are at Coldwater today talking with the defending state champion Cavaliers. We're joined now by head coach Chip Otten. And Chip, you're entering your fifth season as Cavs head coach, a 50-10 record in four years. There's a lot of remarkable stats about Coldwater football, but that's one of those ones that kind of jumped out to me as I was doing a little research. Well, good. Thanks for having me first, Mark. Um, yeah, I don't really think about that too much. You know, I, I came into a situation where I was here at, under Coach Reed and and the system was, was kind of built in and we've had lots of good players and the staff has been relatively stable, uh, same guys, although we've had, you know, Coach Hoyne retired a few years mm -hmm. ago. But but for the most part, um, our coaches are, are have been, been uh, with us for a long time or guys that have played for Coach Reed. And so, so um, fortunately for me, sometimes when you're in the right place at the right time, uh, things fit. We've had so many good players that, you know, my, my job was to to not change things too much and and uh, try to just keep the momentum going, keep the kids playing, keep the kids out, and and so fortunately that, that that's happened for us. Speaking of the coaching staff, I, I think you got a nice blend of some veteran guys and some younger guys who aren't that far removed from their playing days here at Coldwater, and I guess that's just one of the many ways that Coach John Reed's legacy is living out this Cavalier. Yeah, program. exactly. Um, you know, Coach Wright. And myself are about 30 years into it, and Coach Wright's been here all of those 30. I think 20. I think he's at 29. Coach Hemelgarn, who is now our principal, is a volunteering, so he's been here for, I guess, 13, 14. Um, so and you Jeff, could go to the principal's office and have to run gassers. That'd be a really bad that's day. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so he and I uh, change hats. Sometimes I'm his boss, and sometimes he's my <laughs> boss. So that's kind of an interesting thing there. Jeff Kerr has been with us now for when I took over head, but he's been in, in coaching for a long mm -hmm. time. He coaches with the O line, and Thad Forstuffel played for Coach Reed. He's the middle. He's kind of the middle guy in mid 30s guys, and then the younger guys coming in. Um, uh, Mark Bruns came back right. to us from Anderson, and he's the D coordinator. Took over for Tim. Um, he's a he's a low 30s guy. Played for Coach Reed. Dan Kenny mm -hmm. is a is a late 20s guy. Played for Coach Reed, and uh, Corey Clinky now, um, Corey Clinky now is is just got a teaching job here at Coldwater, and that's awesome because he's he's a baseball, football, Absolutely. and even could be a basketball coaching kind of guy, and uh, so he's volunteering at least initially right now, and so yeah, that staff is is we got a good range, so that, that gives you a good mix of. Of, you know, maybe maybe a little bit old school, and the younger guys know all the technology stuff, and they're teaching us that, and we're maybe maybe throw some things in that that maybe say, oh yeah, well let me, I want to try it that way, but it's a good mix, good mix of young guys that are all teachers, all teachers, and uh, Dan teaches at New Bremen, but everybody else is is uh, teaching in Kohler, so we're right here, we know the kids, and so it's been a it's been a good transition, and, and really uh, for a head coach, it's it's a, really makes things a lot easier. Certainly, a lot of talent lost from last year's state title team a lot of talent coming back starting with Brody Hoying the the Mac offensive player of the year also plays safety for you which is what he's going to be doing in college at Eastern Michigan what does Brody Hoying bring to your team both offensively and defensively well you just gotta you just he's a football player and with he's not only a football player but he also has the skills you know you know some guys are football players and maybe don't have the natural ability natural talent well he, he he's got both of those so so you, so you get kind of kind of the whole, you know, back to the Kevin Hoyne day kind of guy. Mm -hmm. um, he, he has good leadership skills, and then certainly, you know, he, he, he makes plays both offensively and defensive like, like, like Kevin did, and, and maybe like, like no other, especially defensively. Um, so, so fortunately, he's another quarterback that we've had the last 15, 20 years that's, that's just outstanding. Um, I guess what I said last year after the state game, when, when, when it comes to crunch time, he's the guy who's not afraid. You know, a lot of our guys are like that, but some guys don't don't really like. Mm, I'm not sure I want the ball when it's <laughs> when it's when it's time. So so when we get in those situations, it's like Brody, come on, it's time now. So so he he likes those situations, and, and he's been through it enough that that um, you know he, he he takes those takes those uh, moments and uh, makes the best out of them. Speaking of that state title game, the win over Bishop Hartley, and wouldn't you know it, week two you guys get another game against Bishop Hartley. Played them last year down in Columbus. They come to Coldwater. This year, I think that might be a unique situation where you have a rematch of the state championship game the following season. Yeah, that is unique, and, and fortunately this year they're coming to us, and, and that really was probably probably the most important game of the year for us last year. Um, you know, we, we lost to a good Kenton team, and, and and if we wouldn't have beat Hartley up there, uh, you know, we wouldn't have made we wouldn't have had a chance to even make the playoffs. No, even if we would have went eight and two, so we went up there, and man, it started off a little rough, but somehow somehow it clicked in and. 
And our, our, our guys kind of started believing then, and then we got on a roll, and, and we were so young, so inexperienced last year that um, that game was really a huge turning point. And they ended up 9-1, and one, got us all those points to get in the playoffs, and then, like you said, it was a rematch in the finals, and now they get to come to Coldwater, so that'd be interesting. I, I'm sure they're, they're really, really want to get a piece of us. Because of how good the MAC is, seven of your ten opponents this year have won state titles in the past. Four of them, Marion Local, Kenton, Hartley, as well as St. John's, were in state semifinals just last season. Week one against Kenton, we know Mike Mock, no longer the head coach, Brent Fackler taking over, but I think that you're going to be approaching it, same type of offense, same type of system for the Kenton Wildcats. Yeah, de defensively for sure with, right. with Coach Fackler. You know, he's, he's been running that defense forever. Um, offensively, um, you know, we haven't really researched it much yet. And we'll see him in scrimmages. My guess is, uh, again, I don't really know, but, but I, I would guess similar style. Um, so the good thing is for our defense, we get to prepare several weeks. You know, when you have to play them in during the regular season, it's got to be tough to prepare for, for, for their offense. But, um, you know, we take practices right now where we say this is a Canton practice. So, yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a great uh, matchup for us. You know, we've lost a couple – couple to them since I've been head coach you know you we went Maddie two years and played him tough but lost and so so that's that's one uh, you know we'd like to get off to a good start and get, get a win there. Cavaliers have gone to five straight state title games is there any concern that the players think going to a state title game is their birthright because they're a cold water Cavalier football team? Um, you know what we address that quite a bit we, we have a we have a saying DTIFG don't take it for granted and, and we and we we bring it up a lot that, that you're not just going to just because it says cold water it doesn't mean you're going to go out there and win those games and and that's where that's where this having a mix good mix of staff coach Rice just walking by me right now going out to practice um, you know he's one of those guys who sees that hey we, we better stay on and make sure uh, make sure that that you know that that they're not uh, thinking that just because we're cold water we're going to we're going to make the playoffs so uh, we, we, we we address that quite often really. And to no surprise, there'll be quite a few cold water games on WOSN this fall, including the Kenton game, the home game against Bishop Hartley, the home game against St. Henry, and then the trip to Marin Local. Need to take a timeout here on the warm-up presented by Community Sports and Therapy. When we return, Matt Finkel will sit down with some of the Cavalier players here on WOSN. Back here on the warm-up, presented by Community Sports and Therapy, joined now by two Cavalier seniors. It's Brody Hoyne to my right and Nick Clooney on the end. Guys, you made it to the finals, five straight years for the program, back-to-back -to -back state titles. What would it mean to you to finish off your senior year with a three-peat? Uh, I think really it'd just be, I don't know, that's really our aiming point to carry on the tradition of what it's been the last five years here. And obviously we know we have the talent to do that again. It's just whether we can prove it on the field. Nick, what would it mean to you to uh, get the third ring? Uh, I think it'd be really exciting. Uh, I got the rings. Um, we always say ring, ring, bling, bling. So get some rings uh, again, that'd be sweet. And uh, this year's in um, Columbus, so it'd be really cool to play at the shoe. So. Yeah, it's a big change. You guys used to playing at the other venue, so that should be a nice change should you make it back. Brody, you're on your way to Eastern Michigan. How did the uh, recruiting process go? Could you explain that a little? Uh, it got long towards the end of it. You know, it started to get take a toll really mentally, so I was definitely excited to get it over with, but I'm really happy with the school I picked. Eastern Michigan's a great school. The coaching staff up there is phenomenal, like no other coaching staff around, so that's really uh, the main thing that clicked for them, but yeah, definitely glad to have it over with. Yeah, I was going to say, it must be nice to put that completely behind you, focus completely on this season. Absolutely, exactly. Nick, the one loss last year in the MAC came to Marion Loco, who finished the season undefeated. Are you looking ahead to that game, maybe just a little? Yeah, yeah um, maybe we're looking at I mean, we got to take it week, one week by one week, but um, that's definitely in the back of my head for, and everyone's heads, I guess, uh, get Marion back this year, because it mean a lot to take them out this year. Brody, what would you say the team's strengths are? Um, obviously, our offensive and defensive linemen are where our depth is. That's where the experience is. You know, that's really what's going to win us the games. Offensive and defensive line, our coach calls it in the trenches. But we got a lot of skill guys too, which is just going to come into effect with the run game and then maybe the deep pass threat. The more the run game is in effect, we'll be able to hit the long ball more. So I would say it all starts up front this year. Nick, you're in the trenches. How's it going in camp? Uh, you guys getting getting dirty down there? Yeah, it's uh, 
lots of hitting started. Uh, well, not official hitting yet. Hitting starts tomorrow. And um, you're looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah, definitely looking forward to that. But uh, we got a lot of guys returning on the offensive line, like uh, Kayla Mayday and uh, Blake Spangler. They're uh, our two big guys, and they were started last year, so we got a lot of experience coming back for the offensive line, and we can make holes for Brody, and he's elusive enough to see if their holes aren't there that he can cut it back outside. So it should be interesting this year. Well, best of luck, guys. Thanks for joining us. Nick's going to open up some, some holes for Brody once the season gets started. Time for a break on the warm-up. When we return, two more Cavalier seniors join me here on the warm-up presented by Community Sports and Therapy. Welcome back to the warm-up presented by Community Sports and Therapy. Third and final down here, two mortar Coldwater Cavaliers joining me. It's Derek Toby on my right and CJ Seibert on the end. Both wide receivers and Derek, you play a little cornerback. CJ plays linebacker. Guys, start with going into your senior year. You're used to getting to that state final. You've done it throughout your career. But it also takes a toll because you end up playing 15 games every season. Do you see that? taking a toll on you or are you just so amped up at that point of the season that it doesn't matter oh yeah definitely we're always amped up towards the playoffs we got to take one week or week by week first to get there first though and cj opening up against kenton a loss last season how motivated are you to get on that field are you ready for week one right now oh i'm really motivated i'm i'm really excited uh it'll be good to hopefully get them back this year and start off the season good derek replacing a pretty strong senior class you played with a bunch of them on that state baseball team as well. Who are the guys that are, are going to step up and, and fill those skill positions and, and on the line that, that graduated? Oh, yeah, um, definitely. We lost a lot of good seniors last year. Uh, we have a lot of good guys coming up, like Aaron Harlemer is playing cornerback, and Kyle McKibben, they're both going to split time at wide receiver and cornerback. And then we have the inside linebackers. Uh, CJ played a little bit last year with Jake Schmidt, and they split time, but they're both starting this year. And then on the offensive line, we have Malave Bettinger playing left tackle and um and then we have all this, the rest of them back this year cj what have you seen at the linebacker position and defensively for the Cavs? Are there any big changes this season um not too many big changes we got a couple new guys in there but they're all working hard busting and trying to get a starting position the linebackers the backups like tony rammel and uh, andrew gillum and then everyone in line too we have a lot of depth there are you looking forward to the game against Bishop Hartley, knowing that you beat them twice last year? And it's going to be, I mean, those first two weeks, you're going to learn a lot about your team going up against Kenton and Bishop Hartley. Oh, yeah, definitely. They're going to be a great team again. It's going to be one up front, up front in the trenches. But we're really looking forward to it and getting winning three games against them. CJ, what's the secret? How do you, how do you just keep winning? Is it, does it have something to do with Coach Otten? Oh, it has a lot to do with Coach Otten, not only Coach Otten, but all the coaches. Um, all the players, too, they work hard all the season, watch films, bust it. We have a lot of competition with them, like among ourselves, so I think that helps a lot. Finally, a couple of scrimmages coming up. I believe you have three on the schedule. What are you hoping to improve most during those chances to play against another team? Um, definitely we're going to have to talk more. we got to work on talking, knowing what everyone's doing, and then we just got to go play football, I guess. Well, Derek, CJ, best of luck. Thanks for joining us. That does it for this edition of The Warm-Up, presented by Community Sports and Therapy. Thanks to all of our guests. For Mark Kuntz, I'm Matt Finkel. We'll see you next time on WOSN.